gold down there, Diane. It's gold down there. You're like their number one favorite guy. Because <laughs> you won them cash. Hi and welcome to the SG Tour Report for our second week on the Aloha Swing. I'm Diane Knox, joined by Steve Elkington and once again we're talking golf on the PGA Tour and the second week in gorgeous Hawaii. It was a great start last week, Diane, one of the great young players. We're going to talk about Harris English in a minute about what he got accomplished last week, hadn't won on the Tour for seven years, but Diane, I can't help but think that this tournament this week, the Hawaiian Open, it was called, when I came on the tour in 1987, it's still at the same place. This course has an amazing history. This is where every young tour player that got his tour credential, this was the opening event for them. And they got to come to this course. They got to see all the old players. When I say old, when I walked on, Lanny Watkins, Craig Stadler, Tom Watson, all these guys, Halo, and they were all there, Diane. They all had their clothes and they were stuff that we'd never seen before. And we were like, wow, I am on the tour. Now, this year, this is kind of the mid-season, but is it really? This is still, in my mind, the opening week of the PGA Tour for the whole field. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this last week because last week was the Century Tournament of Champions in Hawaii. And it's always been the winners from the previous calendar year would tee up for the amazing Kapalua Plantation course. But it was a little bit different because of COVID and the guys that had made it into the final event in the FedEx Cup playoffs, the top 30 in the FedEx Cup standings. That added an extra 17 guys into the field. There's talk of them continuing to do that. I always like it just being the champions because, as you say, this event, the Sony Open in Hawaii, is almost like the, the, the start, the first event of the year. Guys have been working on stuff. They're ready to go. And it's a completely different field that we have in action this week. Yeah, the whole fields, you know, all the young players are in. It's not a very, it's not a great field. When I say that, it's not scattered. We have top 30 players in the world that are in the Hawaiian Open this week. Um, you know, last week, Harris English, who hasn't won on the PGA Tour for seven years, he got in last week because of his top 30 finish on the PGA Tour last year. So tournament of champions, is it really ring a bell or is it true? I prefer, Diane, pure... Um, pure qualification, tournament winners only. I'd like to see them take the Champions Tour back the way they did it in the old days when I first was lucky enough to play in that tournament, have both fields, regular winners from the regular tour, Champions Tour winners, and put them on the same course. Yeah, well, one thing's for certain, Harris English is going to be back there next year, no matter what happens. It was an amazing win for him. It went to a playoff with Joaquin Neiman, who, by the way, we had put as an amazing value pick last week in our report. We had him at number four in our top 10, and he was like 35 to one. And we had said, you know, we really wanted to highlight value picks. He was one of the names. But Harris English had found this amazing form, especially over the past, well, we would say the past year, but the last six months, I mean, he has been there or thereabouts pretty much every single week. And it was only a matter of time before he was going to get that win. I think, I think you're right. I text with uh, his caddy last night, Eric Lassen, who I text him. I said, you keep riding that horse. Yeah. And his response, I'm going to ride it until he throws me off. But um, the three iron shot he hit in the oh. playoff, hole from 255 yards that flew on the green was out of this world off a down slope I'm starting to learn a lot more when we're doing the show Diane I'm sort of realizing that each week on the tour the course gives us a little bit of a signature of what it takes to do it the players have their own accumulation of stats and which ones are actually capable of transferring it onto that course that week yeah, yeah, as you say, you know, it's like we look at the accumulation of stats for the guys and the signature of the course. But going back there to you talking about Harris English's caddy, you know, that's the information that is the the extra layer. That's the, the secret sauce, as we say. Because when English hit that three iron on 18, 
you could tell that he was almost questioning the club and the caddy was like, no, you're hitting three iron, that's it. And afterwards he was like, good pick with the three iron. So you talking to those guys, it just that's our extra layer of information that helps us so much when we're handicapping. Yeah, and Larson's a great caddy. He caddied a lot for Mark Kalkovec here. He caddied for Anthony Kim, and now he's on a on a Harris English bag. You know, <clears throat> as we look forward to this week, Diane, you talked about the signature there of, of what it takes to win. And it's very interesting that this is a whole different golf course that we're going to look at this week. So the, the, it's YLI Country Club for the Sony Open in Hawaii. It's the fourth longest serving course on the PGA Tour. And 1965, I think every year apart from one, they've hosted this event. Um, there's only the other three courses that are ahead of it are Pebble Beach, Colonial and Augusta National for the Masters. So amazing history and heritage on this course. Um, I've got the picture here because I always love seeing this hole. It's the 11th and you have that trademark W with the palm trees. But Elk, this is going to be a, a week where the big hitters, they put that driver back in the bag because it's not going to be essential for them. Yeah, um, you're exactly right, Diane. It's on the ocean, although it's in a bay, so it, it gets affected by wind. <clears throat> but it's it's almost like a inland course, Diane. It's a very narrow course. It's on a small piece of property. It's only got two par fives, the ninth and the eighteenth hole. All players in the field can reach both those holes in in you know in two strokes. There's no great advantage for any long hitters. This course, you've got to be able to hit the greens. You've got to be able to chip the ball up and down. But most importantly, in my mind, Diane, you've got to be able to hit the ball straight. Okay. And uh, because there's trees everywhere. And if you're in the rough all day, you can't get over these trees or under them and try to hold the green. So we've seen in the history of this event, I'm looking at some of the champions, Hubert Green, um, Lenny Watkins, Hale Irwin. And, you know, into the modern era, now we've got, the top five guys that have stroke average on this golf course. We're talking about uh, Webb Simpson's up there, Charles Howe, Kevin Kisner, Ches Reeve, Mark Leishman. All these guys are sort of medium range hitters. Leishman would be the exception there of being a long hitter off the tee, but they all have a certain signature. And this is, this is what I like about the PGA tour. There's horses for courses. I look, the names that kind of spring to mind for me, Matt Kutcher, who won this event in 2019, Jimmy Walker, who won it back to back two years in a row. So very different to last week at Kapalua, where you had those very wide fairways and you could get away with being a little bit wayward off the tee. This week, not so much. Fairways a lot tighter and hitting the green is going to be super important, as you said. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down the main stats we're looking at for YLI Country Club, and then we're going to look at the field. We're going to give you our entire top 10. Then we're going to do it a little bit differently this week. We'll give you three sizzlers, three dark horses. But when it comes to the fizzlers this week, Elk, it's very hard, almost impossible for us to put any guys in that category. Well, you're right. We've talked about this in before our show. It's These guys have all been practicing over the winter. We're not going to tell them they're not going to play well the first week. So just in case they're watching our show. <laughs> which, uh, all these guys that are coming to Hawaii have a lot of hope in their, in their bodies right now, in their souls to do well <laughs> on the PGA Tour. They've got to be ready. They've been practicing. And so we, we can't jinx them by saying they're not going to play well. The only time we can talk about guys that aren't playing well is after they – put some stats together for us and we can yeah. kind of predict that things aren't going well for them. We'll have enough of that to come the rest of the year. Right, part two of our show coming up right here on Sports Grid. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action. 
from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Liu, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. The early line. We have to break it down previous, prior to the game, not in-game, right? So if I see the game start to develop from an in-game perspective, I might change my theory. But I think early on, Ohio State goes in, they run the football, they score first. That's that's very critical to knocking off Alabama. I still lean to Ohio State in the rushing attack, and I'll take under 74 and a half in this ball game. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. But I will still Fair. give the marquee matchups the most attention because we're still learning a lot. I think it's going to be tough to pull the Heat's card at home. The Celtics had a great road win road against the Toronto Raptors the other night. I think coming back here, though, to Miami on a two and a half point spread is good enough of a number for me to back the home favorite. The Sports Grid Network. Justin Fields and the high-scoring Ohio State Buckeye offense take on Heisman Trophy winner Devontae Smith and the Alabama Crimson Tide. It's time to crown a national champion. But this year, you don't have to be at the game to be in the game. Watch in game live for exclusive, actionable wagering opportunities throughout the game. Pre-game coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern, and we go live at 8 with in-game coverage. Ohio State, Alabama, get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. The Pat McAfee Show. But I'm 41, 240 plus pounds. <laughs> Stand up comedian. Me. Nobody's expecting Listen you to me. have explosivity to get up there at nine feet and hammer that thing down. Hammer that <laughs> clean. I know dudes taller than me, lighter than me that can't do that <laughs> off. <laughs> Two to three minutes later, this yes. happens. <laughs> Jesus. The Sports Grid Network. Hi, and this is the SG Tour Report on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Diane Knox, joined by Steve Elkington, and we're talking the Sony Open in Hawaii, Wailai Country Club. And Elk, we talked last week about the fact that wind plays an, a, a, an important factor in Hawaii, of course. You could work that one out. Um, the weather forecast for this week is pretty good. It looks like things are going to be relatively calm. Maybe the strongest winds on Thursday and then a little bit of rain forecast on Sunday. But that can really uh, change up and massively affect the scoring here. Well, yes. When you play a golf course, Diane, that's narrow with trees on both sides, <clears throat> depending on where the wind's blowing, then those corridors become a little bit smaller and tighter. So, you know, we've seen through the history of this event that the guys that actually win this tournament, they putt really well uh, on these Bermuda greens. Not everyone is excellent at putting on Bermuda greens. We saw Harris English putt uh, well last week. Uh, Patrick Reed, who we'll talk about on this show, is the number one putter on the PGA Tour. He lives down in Houston. He's used to putting on this kind of turf. Mm -hmm. You see the Aussies like Cam Smith, the defending champion. This is the same sort of turf we have in Australia. So they're used to it. So, you know, there's a lot of things that go into the pot, Diane, when you when you talk about this tournament. I remember back in the day when I would came to this tournament, I was walking down the road to get to go play my first round. The wind was blowing so hard, 30, 40 miles an hour. And I was like, how are you going to play this tournament? And I looked at the scoreboard and I think I saw Tom Watson and Bobby Clampett was six under each after nine holes. And I'm like, what am I doing on this tour? <laughs> this, is, this is not for me. So I've, I've always learned, doesn't matter if the wind's blowing, doesn't yeah. matter if it's the course is hard or the greens are fast, the scoring is still always very good. We're talking about the very best players there is. Mm -hmm. I think about Justin Thomas when he won in 2017 it was 27 under par was his score but then last year Cam Smith and Brendan Steele in that playoff at 11 under because the weather was terrible last year so I mean we're looking for probably around about 20 under par and if the weather is going to behave itself then that's what we should get um, as you say Cameron Smith winning last year and um, we've had Matt Kutcher champion here before Patton Kazire Justin Thomas as we said. So we're going to look at the stats that are really important for our re-ranking this week. Elk, do you want to go through them? 
Yes, after all the, all the statistics, Diane, over the last 50 years of this tournament, the number one stat on top of all stats is proximity to the hole. We all know Bryson DeChambeau studies this mathematical uh, equation to get the ball closer to the green. Wine open, basically, who gets the most looks at birdies for the whole week? That's number one. Number two stat that we're looking at is scrambling. Who can get the ball up and down when they miss, the, miss around the greens? Number three, of course, the most important one probably is putting average. Who's holding putts? Mm -hmm. Number four is who's making birdies? And number five is accuracy. Now, those stats are all enormously important. I think driving accuracy is a little bit more important than it's weighted on this because if you can't hit it in the fairway, you're not going to get any looks, but that's the top five. I actually, when I was uh, digging deep through our stats and looking at the course, it's one of the hardest courses on the PGA Tour to hit fairways. I think like the tour average was just over 60%. This comes in at like 52%. So that shows you that um, accuracy is going to be important. And as we said before, it's not going to be one of those whip the driver out and crush the ball as far as you can type of courses. Right, so we're going to go through our top 10. And... Coming in at number one is no surprise. I mean, Justin Thomas has gone back to back in 2017, winning at Kapalua and then winning here in the Sony Open. Will Harris English be able to do it? Well, he is our number one this week. Yeah, we don't know if Harris English is going to go crazy and win another tournament this year, but certainly he has a statistic to back up uh, being the number one on our list this week, Diane. The guy was, I think, number one last week in putting. He's hit the most greens last week. He chipped the ball well, uh, but he has that going for him all season long. He uh, won the Shark Shootout with Matt Kuchar recently. He is just sort of just taking it on to a new year. He's Everything in his um, whole team is, is, is calm. He's very calm. Great caddy, great family. He's, he's good to go. And it could be a case when we saw the form that, he, we've seen from him the past couple of months, you know, maybe the floodgates have been opened. But the thing about Harris English that I find like remarkable, and it's one of the reasons why I love the PGA Tour so much and just golf in general, because two years ago, he had to go back to the Corn Ferry Tour finals to secure his card for the PGA Tour. That just shows where his game was at. So it was almost like a rebuilding of everything for Harris English, and it's completely paid off. Yeah, and I'm not sure what the ingredient was that he was missing, but he certainly found it. He, uh, he's always swung it good, uh, putted good. Mm -hmm. Just maybe that tweak mentally that he needs to, maybe he needed to fall off a little bit to find out what he lost or didn't own anymore that needed him to get, get going again. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you know, I look at the stats, Diane. One stat does not get us on the list. You have to have about three good ones on this one. And, you know, he... If we were going to go down the math, he's in the top five in making birdies. He's right at the top in putting. He's obviously confident. He's good to go. Yeah, for sure. Coming in at number two is the 2013 champion here. And when we go back to the recent fall season at the end of 2020, this guy's name was up there pretty much every week when it came to our report. And that is Russell Henley. Yeah, Russell Henley is uh, another one of these tall good looking young kids that have got great potential. You know, I look at his stats, Diane, and look, I played the tour for 30 years. These are impressive. He drives it straight. He's in the top 10. The really important one, he's in the top 20 in proximity to the hole. So he gets a ton of looks. And when he gets, when he misses a green, he's a four, he's in the top five of getting up and down. And he's a great putter. So there's no reason that uh, Russell Henley is, uh, he deserves to be right, right at the top of this list. You know, um, you look down this list, when we go through all this, Diane, there's a lot of guys that you, you're pretty shocked that then they don't have the numbers you thought they would, or yeah. you have some guys like Russell Henley who has numbers that I didn't think he possessed. So there's sort of, in my mind, my job on this report, Diane, is find out all the information I can and then look at it and go, is this guy capable of winning? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Well, our number three guy definitely is capable of winning. And on paper, this course would just suit him down to a T. We're talking about Webb Simpson. Yes, Webb Simpson is always on our list, it seems, <laughs> Diane. 
as we talked earlier in the show about horses for courses, Webb Simpson's perfect medium range hitter off the tee. He's not long. Matt Kuchar won this tournament. Very similar games. He's a good putter. Thinks good. Perfect setup for him. We've said it once and we'll say it probably a hundred more times, but Webb really is Mr. Consistent on the PGA Tour. And I mean, you look at the fact that he's played this tournament 10 times, has never missed a cut. He finished third last year and had a makeable birdie putt on the 72nd hole in regulation to get into that playoff. But the way that he plays this course is always solid. Two top five finishes, four top 20 finishes. And I think the thing that maybe puts a bit of a a question mark over Webb right now is the fact that we saw such amazing consistent play for so long. And then lately, it's kind of fallen by the wayside, but only to his standards. Finishing 17th last week at the Century Tournament of Champions. Before that, 37th and then 10th, which, you know, they're still amazing numbers, but I think we're comparing Webb now (laughs) to the Webb that we saw after the return of golf. So, I mean, looking across the board at his numbers, driving accuracy third on the PGA Tour in scrambling, he's sixth, and we've said that that's going to be such an important stat this week. The one that lets him down, I guess, and we've said that the stats you have to maybe take with a bit of a pinch of salt this week, but putting average 147. Seventh, But a lot of people see him as the real strong favourite this week. We have him at number three. But um, yeah, this type of course, this type of grass, the fact that you don't have to be one of the longest hitters on the tour, it kind of sets up well for his game. Elk, the other thing about the stats, and we said this last week too, that it's it's hard to take the stats 100% for what they are because a lot of guys maybe hadn't played a huge amount in the fall season and you have that break over Christmas and New Year where you are really working on everything. So we take that into consideration too. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, so our top three so far, Harris English, Russell Henley and Webb Simpson. Still to come right here on Sports Grid, we're going to go through the rest of the top ten and we will give you our three sizzlers for the Sony Open. Pharrell. Coast to coast! Is it true that Carson Wentz... Uh, and Peterson are butting heads. Once it's just not happy with the organization and particularly the head coach. Now, as far as being traded or him wanting out, my sense is the Eagles will look at whether it's better to keep him or to trade him. The salary cap ramifications are way worse if they trade him, and they have to figure out how they're going to do that. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. Vegas has been a favorite here. The last couple of years, came up short last year again. They're eight and a half to one right now in FanDuel. That ain't mm. going to be that high. When we get to playoff time, when we get, they're going to be, what, one of the favorites at three to one, four to one, five to one. You're not getting this number again. If you want Vegas to win the cup, now is the time at plus 850 on FanDuel. That's where you got to be. The Sports Grid Network. Pro Football Today. On the defensive side of the ball, the Pro Bowl defensive tackle Aaron Donald. My guess is it was a painful era. He got an injection. Some of it was better. He came off back on the sideline, but felt like he needed more and went back off again. But by that point, it was no point. So I think Aaron Donald won't practice much this week, but I do believe he makes the bell and plays against the Packers or whoever they end up facing. The Sports Grid Network. The Pat McAfee Show. They didn't win, but I tend to think that if I'm a team this offseason looking for a quarterback that's not in the draft, not in free agency, I don't know how Matthew Stafford's up top of the list. Bingo! Yep. Bingo! That big brain of yours is right on with mine. That makes me feel very, very smart. And, listen, and the thing about Matty Stafford is feels like he is a mentally tough mm-hmm. dude. The Sports Grid Network. Hello, I'm Dr. David Chow, a.k.a. Pro Football Doc. I spent 17 years on an NFL sideline with the Chargers as a head team position, and I can tell you teams don't want to tell you the whole story. That's where I come in. I know what they're trying to tell you and trying not to tell you. I know how to assess injuries and how it will impact players and teams that week. Come check out ProFootballDoc.com. You can't make a bet or set a fantasy lineup without coming to consult with us at ProFootballDoc.com. Line up, ladies! 
the early and line. Have that ready in the holster if you start to see a game get out of hand. Like, I think you are correct that this may be something mm -hmm. to look at for this season, but how do we leverage it? Right. I think pulling your guys, a lot of bench, all bench fourth quarters. We're seeing that in the NBA. As far as then how you play it, I, I don't know if there's an exact answer. And that's why I almost say you might just want to step back from prop. The Sports Grid Network. We're talking golf on the PGA Tour right here on Sports Grid. I'm Diane Knox, joined by Steve Elkington, as always. And it's the Sony Open in Hawaii. We're going through our top 10 this week. Um, Harris English at number one, Russell Henley at number two, and three, Webb Simpson. I should note, when we're recording this, Russell Henley is 35 to one. So right away, there's some good value at the top. You bet. 35 to one be a great bet on Russell Henley. Mm -hmm. uh, this next name though, Diane, is very interesting to me. Yes, and he is 30 to one, which when we tell you everything, again, good value. We're talking about Kevin Kisner. And when we look at the, the most total strokes gained on Wildlife Country Club over all time, Kevin Kisner comes in at number four on that list. Yeah, not only does he play this golf course well, but when I look at Kevin Kisner, Diane, in a recent form, he just got beaten a playoff down in Sea Island, uh, at the end of the season or the end of the calendar year. But last week, to me, I'm looking at what his current form is. Mm -hmm. He putted good enough last week to win uh, at Kapalua. He drove the ball almost in the top five for accuracy. He was last in distance. Doesn't surprise me. He's not a long hitter. <laughs> and the only thing that Kevin Kisner has to fix a little bit this week is his iron game. If he gets his iron game on point, he's driving it straight and he's putting good enough to win – and he's really good on this golf course. That is the kind of guy that I'm looking at, and he will be my pick this week. But how good is that for a tour player just to have one area that they know that they're not firing on all cylinders? Because, my God, then they're going to go work on that one thing. Diane, if I knew that I was putting good enough to win the tournament last week, yeah. I would be so excited with everything. <laughs> because normally for me, that would be my downfall. I was either hitting the ball good enough or I was driving it straight enough and I wasn't being able to make any putts. But Kisner's got it all there. So that's, yeah. the, that's the guy I'm watching this week. Okay, I, I got that wrong. He's actually third on this course for strokes gain total of all time. So amazing record for him. Um, coming in at number five in our top 10 is a guy that we had as a brilliant value pick for the Century Tournament of Champions. And he ended up losing in a playoff. We saw some incredible form from Joaquin Neiman and there's no reason why he can't keep that going. The rubbery looking 22 year old Diane <laughs> didn't even need to warm up yesterday for the playoff. He was just sitting there with his girlfriend having some lunch. It was great to see. You know, he may have kind of screwed up the playoff. He didn't hit a great second shot, and then he got a bad lie and made a, made a par, and, and Harris won it. But, mm -hmm. yeah, this is an exciting young player. He, he comes from Chile. The turf over there has got to be the same as all this. This is very familiar to him. He played yesterday with his friend Sergio Garcia. I wouldn't be surprised if Sergio was cheering him along all, all yesterday, shot nine under in the final round. He's on his way. He's going to be a star player. And this is just going to be another, this is a perfect, another style golf course. Even though this kid's a long hitter, he'll handle it because the courses in Chile don't have a lot of land and they're squished in. So he'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, and we're going to talk about Ryan Palmer in a little while, actually. But um, they were saying yesterday on the telecast that Joaquin Neiman is exactly half the age of Ryan Palmer. And it's like another reason why it's so great to watch these guys out on the PGA Tour week after week. But um, Neiman right now, 22 to 1. So again, there's still a good bit of value when it comes to him. At 28 to 1 and number 6 on our list is last year's champion. Now, the winning score last year was 11 under par because they saw very difficult weather conditions. Brendan Steele kind of had it tied up, especially over Thursday, Friday and Saturday. But Sunday, Cameron Smith kind of came out of nowhere and ended up getting that win. And uh, we've got him at number six this week. Always look at the Aussies when you play in the Sony, Diane, because the weather is the same. We're, we're, in, we're in Australia right now. We're in the summer. And Cam Smith grew, grew up in Brisbane, and the, the, the climate is identical to this. This is so familiar to him. This is the turf's identical. Uh, even though he probably wasn't there this year with COVID, Cam Smith, is a terrific player. You saw him at the Masters this year 
you know, drives it great. There's no surprise why he does well on this course. He's a medium range length hitter, very accurate, great putter, great chipper. And number one thing you need the most, Diane, is good attitude. Mm -hmm. Cam Smith's got a good attitude. Yeah, he always seems like very carefree and maybe that's why he plays so well when he's in Hawaii. At number seven is a guy that had an incredible week last week and he had a chance to win it at one point, ended up finishing 10th and that is Daniel Berger. Daniel Berger's, you know, he's come on, he's like Harris English. I mean, he 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 had a down period in his golfing, golfing life and then he came back and won Colonial last year, the first tournament after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Berger to me, I mean, I slotted him here. I moved him up just a little bit, Diane, because of his form from last week and because he hits the iron so good and he controls the flight of his ball with the wind. Mm -hmm. I just like this kid a lot. Um, he's a superior striker. Reminds me a little bit of a, like a Lenny Watkins. Pretty fearless. Putt's good. I like him a lot. Um, he's at 20 to 1 as we record this. Now, you're big on Colin Morikawa in general. And last week when I was on Sports Grid, the guys were asking me about him and they were like, every week Elk's like bigging up Morikawa. And I'm like, yeah, but listen to him. <laughs> he knows what he's talking about. Last week at the Century Tournament of Champions, it was another great showing for him. And I mean, there's no place for him but in the top 10 for the Sony Open in Hawaii. Yeah, he didn't play good yesterday in Hawaii, but... He's a current PGA champion. He's young, um, top 10 in driving accuracy. So think about this. Colin Morikawa, we all know how good he plays, but we're going to a narrow course this week. And Mor all the tools that Morikawa has, we know he's great, mm -hmm. but top 10 in driving accuracy? I'm just going to stop it. There. I'm not going to put any more gush on it than that, Diane. I'm just going to tell you. Morikawa has a lot of skills and he's one of the straightest drivers on the tour. Yeah, and he's so incredibly young. Like He's still at the very start of his professional golf career and it's just so exciting to watch. Ryan Palmer is in at number nine. Now, we had Palmer as a sizzler last week for the Century Tournament of Champions. He got in because he finished top 30 in the FedEx Cup standings and after Saturday's round, I was like, Oh my gosh, I was so big on Ryan Palmer to go and win. And maybe we're a little bit biased because he's a secret golf contributor, but it was very exciting for him. Fell away a little bit on that front nine on Sunday, but did charge back. And we saw incredible iron play from Ryan Palmer. Well, obviously he knows the course really well. Yeah, we were, we were really big on uh, Ryan last week when he's leading. And why, sh why wouldn't we be? He, the guy is the oldest guy in the field. He had one bad shot yesterday that I saw. It was on the 11th hole. He pulled it and went down into the, the heavy stuff and made double bogey. And that was kind of the end of it. But he birdied four of the last five holes yesterday, Diane. I think he finished third. So, uh, he, you know, he's on, he's on form. I saw him take his cap off to congratulate the other. Got a little gray, Diane, on the side <laughs> there. So the young guys must be thinking, who's this old codger that's playing, keeping up with us out there? But who doesn't love Ryan Palmer? Hits it good. He's getting better every year. Mm -hmm. He's gone through uh, his family. His wife had an illness. He's come back. He's stronger than he ever was. I love it. One thing I do want to talk to you quickly about um, is on Saturday after he finished, the rules officials called him in and on nine, he had kicked a divot when his ball was still moving. The ball was going to stop nowhere near where he, he kicked the divot, but they really questioned him about that. And he had to come up. I saw him on TV saying, you know, I'm never going to cheat the game. I'm not that kind of guy, but um, that could, that could have messed with him a little bit mentally. It could have if, uh, so to be clear, he had a pitch shot up onto a plateau. He hit it. He realized he hadn't put enough steam on it. And he, in, in anger, he took a swing at a divot. And the rule says that if the ball's still moving around, you can't affect anything around here. Uh -huh. And But the ball ran over there, so he yeah. was cleared of any penalty. But I think it's good to remember that rule um, because it could happen to us when we play. But... Uh, no, I mean, I think I think he'll be pleased that he didn't get a penalty there. Yeah, for definite. And uh, putting average tenth on the PGA Tour right now for Ryan Palmer. But um, yeah, I mean, I was amazed at how he played his irons. He's got one of the easiest looking swings to watch as well. But completing our top ten is Patrick Reed. Now we had tipped Reed to have a big week last week 
in Kapalua. It didn't really materialize for him, but it's hard to rule him out. Yeah, Patrick Reed, we never saw much of him on TV last week. He is the number one putter on the whole PGA Tour. He putted good enough last week to win the tournament, average 1.67 putts per greens in reg, which is the same basically as Harris English. So what went wrong for him last week? Where, where was it down for? He drove it pretty good. He didn't hit his irons very good. This is very similar to Kevin Kisner. And then he either put his irons in a bad position where he couldn't get up and down, but he's so close to um, having one stat away from being right where he needs to be. And uh, by the way, did I mention he's number one putter on the whole PGA Tour? Yeah. <laughs> and when you were saying, you know, going back to Kisner, you think Patrick Reed was going to finish one week in Hawaii. We know the one thing that he's going to be working on then. He's an extremely experienced player. He's a former Masters champion. He's smart enough with his game to know the one thing that he's got to work on. And we always say guys just have to really outperform in one of their stats to make such big jumps up. And we take that into account. He's 16 to one this week for the Sony Open. And I told you earlier um, in pre-production, it's very hard to go from zero miles an hour to 100, which is a lot of these young guys that are just arriving in Hawaii for the first time, or maybe they're just getting their year kicked off. All these guys that were lucky enough to play at Kapalua, they've already been through four rounds of tournament play and two rounds of practice. They know what they got to work on. They, you know, ever settled for them. They're used to the weather. They're used to the greens. Big advantage for the guys that are coming out of Kapalua. We've heavily weighted Kapalua into our thinking this week because, let's face it, they have a big advantage. All the other guys are sitting at zero miles an hour trying to get to 100 miles an hour as quick as they can. And uh, the guy who's definitely at 100 miles per hour is the top of our list. It's no surprise our top 10 starts with Harris English. Then we have Russell Henley, Webb Simpson, Kevin Kisner, Joaquin Neiman, Cameron Smith, Daniel Berger, Colin Morikawa, Ryan Palmer, and Patrick Reed. So still to come, we're going to go through three sizzlers for the week. We're going to explain why we haven't got any fizzlers for you this week. And of course, those all-important dark horses with some fantastic odds coming up right here on Sports Good. Line up, ladies! The early line. Cleveland and Pittsburgh, they can't push it back, right? They can't just yeah. massage the puzzle pieces anymore. They can't even go to like Tuesday night football because, you know, the winner of that game would then be on ridiculously short rest for a playoff game the following week. So talk to me about how you think um, an abundance of caution is going to play out for Cleveland. A part of me wondered if, if the NFL pushing through the way that they did through the regular season if they maybe should have reconsidered an approach to the playoffs. You know, they certainly flirted with the idea of going with an eighth team. I, I just wonder if they would have said, everybody gets a week off, eight teams are going to make it. Again, you could say that that would be unfair for the Chiefs and the Packers. I get all that. It's just like, you want the playing field to be as level as possible here. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. How surprised were you to see the Ravens favored in this game? I think I was surprised to see them favored by three and a half because it's almost like the odds makers are begging you to take the Titans, right, with that hook yeah. there, uh, and especially at home. But the problem is the Titans' defense. They can't stop Deshaun Watson. They can't stop Matt Stafford. And I don't think that they're going to stop Lamar Jackson in that uh, potent running attack. The Sports Grid Network. In-game live wagering is something that is clearly growing. On In-game Live, you're interacting with the hosts in real time, and the real-time data is changing constantly. With our edge analysis, it's only going to become a more vital part to the betting experience. Even if our hosts aren't talking about it at that time, you'll see odds constantly refreshing, and we're explaining why it's changing to help you, the better, see what we're seeing. I, I truly believe that the analysis and the data, it's going to be better, it's going to be more precise, and it gives us the ability to pivot so quickly. We're giving you close to 50 hours a week of in-game live. It is the perfect second screen experience to get the winning edge while you are watching live sports. I'm Greg Sussman, and if you want the winning edge, you need to be watching in-game live, only on SportsGrid. 
Fantasy Sports Today. His passing total, Joe, is 365 and a half. And just a note here for those of you who are betting and would like some information backed up with the odds, no problem. Jones had six games of more than 365 <laughs> passing yards. But my early lead on this is that a high scoring game is definitely going to play in. And so um, this seems like a very high number, but is it high enough? Because Jones goes over it pretty much in two thirds of the games he plays in. The Sports Grid Network. Hi, we're talking golf right here on the Sports Grid Network for the Sony Open in Hawaii. We're going through our guys. We've given you our top 10, and now we're moving on to Sizzlers. Now, I'm Diane Knox. Steve Elkington is here. Um, we have some great Sizzlers this week, and we'll do Dark Horses in a little while too. But normally we give you some Fizzlers. Elk, I know that you hate doing the Fizzlers anyway because you <laughs> hate putting the bad karma on any of these guys, especially us saying that we think they're going to perform um, badly. That's the word to use. Why are we not picking any for this week? Well, it's the sort of the opening of the golf season for all the tour players. They've been practicing, working on their games. I am not going to pick a guy that's going to play poorly this week by on the first week out. I just can't do it, Diane. And the other thing is, is that even if guys were not playing great in the fall season, they had a good stretch of time to work on their game. So we're, who, who are we to say that, oh, yeah, they weren't doing that well a month and a half ago? Because... It was the, the time to put in the work and get better. But as the compensation, we're going to do three sizzlers and three dark horse picks. And our first sizzler is 110 to one. Now, I love this. And we've got some cool stories about this guy, actually. But he finished T12 last year and third in 2018. Tom Hoagie is our first one this week. This is why you should tune into our show to get this kind of information, Diane. Tom Hoagie's from North Dakota. <laughs> Imagine the weather that he's getting out of in North Dakota. But look, he finished 12th last year. He finished third two years before that. Yeah. Hoagie is number three on the whole PGA Tour in putting. He's number seven in birdie average. He scrambles good. And his proximity to the hole is better than uh, 120 guys that are playing <laughs> this week. So... When you look for value and you look for guys that have the chance to come up, mm -hmm. medium range hitter, straight player. We talk about, when I talk about some of my friends like Pat Perez, Jason Duffner, they're getting a little older. They have to play tournaments that suit them. Yeah. And all these big hitters on the tour have got all these courses that are miles long and they crush it and they win. But this one is suited to a very... Uh, particular group diane and this young man fits the mold okay and as we said 110 to one so tom hoagie i mean it's a brilliant name to really look out for and as you say he lives in north dakota so hopefully he's been working indoors on some of these simulators that we see week after week <laughs> think how pleased you'll be to get a little sun on his face and, uh, and uh, be so thankful that he's out there playing on the tour Exactly. Well, coming up next, another sizzler. And this guy holds the fourth best stroke average around Wiley Country Club, Ches Reevy. Now, Elk, again, like brilliant finishes. In 2017, he was T8. In 2019, he was tied for third. And at 75 to one, there's no way we could overlook him as a sizzler. When I think of Chaz Reeve, Diane, I think proximity to the whole number in the top 10 of the whole PGA Tour. Yeah. And I think of him as a straight hitter, but I think of a guy that struggles with his putting a little bit, but he must have figured it out a little bit here. He's in the top four of all time in scoring. Mm -hmm. So Chaz Reeve, we say he has to lean sideways to see the pin. He hits it so straight on his second shot. So that's why he's in this list this week. And uh, he won the Travelers Championship, was it two years ago? That was a big one for him. And that course in Hartford, again, it's all about accuracy and hitting that green. So the numbers tell that exact same story for this course. There's a lot of pressure, uh, Diane, on medium range hitters on the big courses where they're 40 yards behind some of the bombers. Mm -hmm. This course, not, there's none of that involved. This is... Yeah. There's lots of out of bounds on this course. There's probably six places you could go out of bounds. There's only two par fives. 
every person can reach the, the par fives in two. Okay. So there's no advantage for the bombers. There's dog legs, there's palm trees everywhere. So if a guy just knocks it down the middle, he's in the best position. The history of this tournament, the history of all the scoring tells us, and he's proven it, he's number four. So mm -hmm. that's why I chose Reeves on our list. Yep, at 75 to 1. He is one of our sizzlers. And our third sizzler is a very consistent name. I heard a great story because we always laugh at the fact that Sanjay M plays every single week on the PGA Tour. And he just bought his first ever home. He'd been living in hotels. So even when he wasn't playing, which was extremely rare, he would be staying in a hotel. So maybe he's going to be a little bit more settled in his life. He had a brilliant week, especially a great Sunday last week in Kapalua. And he is our third sizzler. He made a beautiful 10-foot putt on the last hole yesterday at Kapalua. I was watching very closely at some JM stroke, and it was left to right, probably the hardest putt that a, that a right-hander can face with a lot of wind off the left, and he just poured it in beautiful. But anyone that listens to the show who knows some JM knows how straight he hits, and he plays so good at the Masters this year. I just think this course will suit him. He's number one on the whole PGA Tour at making birdies. Yeah. So what does that tell you? He gets a lot of chances because we know he's not that great a putter. So he's one of the great strikers that we have on the tour. Hits the ball very consistently. And I just think this is a perfect setup for him. Okay. So our three sizzlers this week are Tom Hoagie, Ches Reevee and Sung J M. Right, Elk, Sony Open in Hawaii, as we've said, you know, this course, a lot of history, a lot of heritage. What are you most looking forward to seeing? Well, it's a, it's a very nostalgic week, Diane. This was the start of the tour for us. This is where I went over there, you know, as a rookie and remembered all, you know, seeing all this. It's the same golf course. I really like seeing these same courses that uh, we play every year. They can't lengthen this course anymore. There's no room. So they play it almost identical, Diana, to what I saw. I like to see the wind blow. They used to have real pineapples on the tee as tee markers, Diane, years ago. And I remember I remember uh, Craig Stadler one time got so mad at a shot, he took a swing and knocked the top off one of those pineapples. So when, on 18, when we got there, it was just a half a pineapple. So <laughs> there's a lot of things come to mind when I think about the Hawaiian Open. If I ever see half a pineapple, I want it to be filled with some sort of beverage with a straw and a little mini umbrella sticking out the top. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> How did you guys? Great mind. Yeah, right, Elk, thank you very much. Um, again, I mean, it's amazing for us to watch more golf in Hawaii. So here's hoping for another great week. We have some dark horse picks coming up and we're going to have Secret Golf's Jay Kaplan in on the action. Now, last week for the Century Tournament of Champions, um, well, our dark horses got off to a really good start. I picked Martin Laird. You had Mark Leishman. And after the first round, they were like a couple of shots off the lead. But it didn't really stay that way. No, it didn't. But I will say, if we're looking for some silver linings, which, of course, I guess in the betting world, there really aren't. You either make it or you don't. Um, Mark Leishman came in struggling, as we talked about over the last few weeks or the last few shows and he actually played well. So, so that's good. He's a secret golf contributor. So it was nice to see him get off to a good start in Hawaii. And of course you picked Martin Laird for, for the sole reason because he's Scottish. And he'd finished runner up on this course before. So, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, and um, what did you make of Harris English finally getting that W? Uh, Seems like it's about time. Um, we always have him ranked really high, uh, so we weren't surprised that he won and uh, that he had to gut it out in the playoff, I think, was a good thing for him as well. And uh, he's, he's a steady player that we should get used to him being in the top 10 and winning some of these events, it's particularly now when there's uh, a strong field. He's that type of player. So it, it was no surprise to me that he won. Mm -hmm. We have him ranked as our number one this week. Vegas has Webb Simpson as the strong favorite. What do you think about that? Uh, seems like a course made perfectly for Webb Simpson. Um, Elk has already told us it's sort of this narrow course that's kind of wedged in the neighborhood there. And that seems like a Webb Simpson course. He's played here many times. He's had a little bit of success here. 
So it's not going to surprise us when he's near the top. Harris English, is he going to be hung over emotionally or is he going to be uber confident and go back to back and basically capture the island? Let's see this week. And with Harris English, I mean, not having a win on the PGA Tour since 2013, Hawaii is a pretty good place to be making those memories again. So I think people look at Harris English as a young guy, but he's been out here for quite some time. He's seasoned. He's toughened. I'm looking for a big 2021 out of him. Uh, we should see more results like this. And I'm sure he's in celebratory mode. Yeah. And he's got that momentum heading into this week as well. Right. So the dark horse picks. Um, yeah, we have three this week, as I said. And well, I'm going to take, do you want me to go first, actually? I'm only going to say that because my dark horse pick is 750 to one. <laughs> then it probably demands a little more time of explanation. So okay. please, by all means. Right. Um, <laughs> the, I'm just going to give you some numbers because we always do the, the world ranking and then we do the field rank and then we do our rank. So this guy's world ranking is 1,862. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a real number. I thought that was a typo. And then we do the field rank based officially on the world rankings. His field rank's 127th, which is like way at the bottom. But when we put all of the stats into our system, he jumped all the way up to number 30. So to me, I was like, 750 to one, this guy, I mean, miracles could happen, you never know. And it is William McGirt. <laughs> now, William McGirt was out injured for a while. And then this is him. He's probably got like medical exemption starts. And I'm guessing that this is one of them. Elk always talks about, you know, you have to pick the courses that best suit your game. And we did say at the start that the number one stat for this course, YLI, is proximity to the hole. What do you think Will McGirt is on the whole PGA Tour for proximity to the hole? Have a guess. Um, well, for him to jump up into our formula, I mean, all right, let me cop to it. I'm staring at the number. So I don't feel like I should be able to participate in your little game okay. here. So why don't you tell everybody what his number is? Five. Five. <laughs> On the whole PGA Tour, the most important stat for this week, he's fifth. However, it's one of those things that like, you know, you get a little bit of a spark, you get some magic happening, you outperform <laughs> the other four stats. <laughs> and it could be a good week. I'm not saying Will McGirt is going to win the Sony Open. However, it could be worth a little bit of money if you want to put like maybe at making the cut or at top 25, or if you're going all guns blazing, shoot for that top 10. But um, Will McGirt is my dark horse. Usually when I'm looking for advice and picks, if the person giving me the advice is laughing bashfully all the way through her explanation on why this person is their pick, I'm not so sure that that person has the confidence. It's no disrespect, I'm only laughing because the numbers are like crazy. 1,860 seconds in the world yeah. and up to number you know, 30. That's a huge jump. So... This week, I've got two dark horses. I'm going to give you one now, and I'm going to hold one back for our next segment. So let's start with this first one. Um, and I like this guy's numbers. They match up with Wailea very well. 38th in driving accuracy, 42nd in scrambling. So if he does miss the green, he, he has a chance to recover. He's 32nd in birdie average, where scoring is going to be crucial this week. Mm -hmm. So my first dark horse pick at YLA is Bryce Garnett. All I'm going to say is a uh, 119th in proximity and Will McGirt is five. So maybe he should be, uh, maybe we should all be safe taking some tips from McGirt. So there we go. First dark horse pick from Jay is Bryce Garnett. We have one more to come ahead of the Sony Open in Hawaii right here on Sports Grid. From the City of Angels to the Big Apple, shake it up with Pharrell Coast to Coast. Shake it up, should do that. All my friends then come around, flat to flat to With your up. host, the one and only Scott Pharrell. Coast to coast in the biggest way possible, hanging 
Covering every sport, every league, every single weekday. And Scott's got an opinion on all Get that guy a cold beer. I mean, that, he's telling it exactly like it is. Jump on the coast-to-coast -coast bandwagon with America's most engaging sports personalities. We all love to bet on everything. Regular contributors, including NFL insider Adam Kaplan, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, NBA Radio's Rick Kamla, Bleacher Report MLB insider Scott Miller, the sports professor Rick Harrow, USA Today's Bob Nightingale. Every game, every story, every injury, everything you need to know. Join the Pharrell Coast to Coast Party every weekday afternoon from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern, 1 to 3 Pacific, only on Sports Grid. Hi, this is Dr. David Chow, and we have a great announcement from ProFootballDoc.com. You've seen me all over SportsGrid. I hope you've enjoyed it. But now you can go to the website and get more customizable, exclusive, better content, more detailed, searchable for your own needs for gambling, DFS, and fantasy purposes. And the best news of all at ProFootballDoc.com, for all SportsGrid viewers, it's now free. Sign up today. Line up, ladies! The early line. Right now, the total's at 42 and a half. The spread is at four. Do you want to bet any of these now? You're buying a number on Seattle and the the risk of goth, right? Right. You're not, there. there's no worry there. You've got the number that says Jared Goff is going to play quarterback. But if he doesn't, I mean, you're almost getting a, you know, probably a free field goal, if not. The Sports Grid Network. Monday night. College football crowns the 2021 national champion. It's the SEC versus the Big Ten. Nick Saban versus Ryan Day. Watch in game live for exclusive, actionable wagering opportunities throughout the game, along with live commentary from the Sports Grid team. Don't miss the key in game pivot points to get in the game and play your game. Follow the shifting odds in real time on your second screen. Ohio State, Alabama. Get the winning edge. Team that's on fire right now in Tampa with Tom uh, lighting it up. Washington for all is offensively challenged. So the, the, the Bucks don't need to put up 30 plus points though they probably could if Evans have, happened to be healthy. Brady's playing great. I remember you and I wondering after that first game of the season against the Saints in New Orleans, right. if Brady was the same quarterback. Well, guess what? He finished the season with 40 pa touch and pa touchdown passes. The Sports Grid Network. We're back for our final segment right here on the Sports Grid Network. And it's all about the Sony Open in Hawaii for the PGA Tour this week. Now, we're giving you our dark horse picks. Mine is 750 to 1. <laughs> Will McGirt, uh, you heard it here first. And Jay's first pick was Bryce Garnett at 225 to 1. Right, Jay, we're giving you one more dark horse. Oh, is that your cat? That is my cat. <laughs> oh. Okay. Wow, that tail came out of nowhere. Um, better hope who's, it's your, who's your second pick before we wrap it up? My second pick is a guy I've, I've leaned on before. I leaned on him last year at Bermuda. He finished fourth. Mm -hmm. And he's a guy that will be accustomed to playing in this climate. He's Australian. Traditionally, he'd been, he would be coming over from Australia. It's where it's summertime, and he'd be playing in Hawaii, very comfortable with the wind. He's also married to a former Miss Idaho, oh. which, yeah, I don't know what that says about him, but he is definitely living the American dream. It is Matt Jones coming in at 150 to 1 in Vegas. And he's um, 20 in our re-ranking, jumping, well, he's 44 in the field rank. We have him at 20 in our re-ranking. So, again, a big jump. And... You know, just looking at Matt Jones scrambling, which we've ranked as the second most important stat for the week, he is 20th on the PGA Tour. So there you go. Um, Matt Jones wrapping up our three dark horse picks for the Sony Open in Hawaii. Right. And we always say, what are we most looking forward to this week? How about you? I'm looking forward to my two dark horse picks hitting, but I'm also looking forward to seeing if Harris English can continue his good play and uh, see if he can go two for two on the island. Yeah, um, I'm also looking forward to, well, a second week in Hawaii, which is always fun to watch. What I love is um, nighttime golf, which seems like such a weird thing. We're on the East Coast, but when I lived in Scotland, 
the PGA Tour was always shown at night time. And my brother is playing this week, Russell Knox, his first event of 2021. So I'm always excited to be um, extremely biased. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for watching our show here on the Sports Grid Network. Um, well, the PGA Tour is leaving the island next week to head to California for the start of the West Coast Swing. It's the American Express at La Quinta in Palm Springs. Andrew Landry, who's a secret golf contributor, is defending champion. So we'll be back next Wednesday to talk all about that and give you our picks.